Now some attacks review, with a particular focus on economic incentives. These were covered in our first course, so go back and take that course if you haven't already. Let's review an attack called feather forking. Suppose Gloria is a large mining pool. To carry out this attack, Gloria would announce that she'll attempt to fork every time she sees a transaction from me, Rusty. But she also announces that she would also give up after the block containing my block has K confirmations. Unlike the attack where one attempts to fork forever, punitive forking, this attack can still work even if you have less than 51% of the mining power. So what chance does Gloria the mining pool actually have at successfully forking? To answer this question, let's suppose that she has Q proportion of the total mining power. Let's have K, the number of confirmations after which she'll give up, be equal to 1. This means that she has a Q times Q, or Q squared, chance of successfully orphaning my block. In a case where Q is equal to 20%, this means her chance of successfully orphaning my block is just 20% squared, or 4%. These are not great odds. Even though her odds of actually orphaning my block are very low, they still change the rest of the miner's choice model in a powerful way. If the miner's block is rejected, the miners will take zero profit. However, if the miner's block is accepted, then the profit the miners will expect to receive will vary based on whether they include my transaction in the block. If they do choose to include my transaction, then the miner's expected payoff from doing so will be my transaction fee plus the block reward times the probability that the attacking mining pool does not orphan the block with my transaction, or 1 minus Q squared. However, if they choose not to include my transaction, then their expected payoff will be just the block reward. In order for the expected payoff from including my transaction to be greater than the expected payoff from not including my transaction, I must pay a transaction fee that offsets the difference. This can prove incredibly expensive and perhaps infeasible for me. Thus, we have shown that even with 20% of the network hash rate, we can make it prohibitively expensive for someone to participate in the Bitcoin network. Now that we have the game theory knowledge, you have likely seen the same attack from a completely different perspective. This is exactly what we're aiming for, to understand common blockchain protocols from this crypto economics perspective. We'll leverage this frame of mind as we dive into the next section, Proof of Stake.